With the release of El Camino, the follow-up movie for the five seasons of Breaking Bad, Jesse Pinkman finally gets a chance to wrap up his story. Jesse was originally written as a comic foil for Walt's entry into the drug world. He's presented in the pilot as a caricature of a slacker and a lowlife. Although he was initially meant to be killed off at the end of season one, we begin to see a more complex picture of Jesse's motivations. Jesse is the most human character on the show. He has an infectious joy and optimism, and despite everything he goes through, he retains his belief in the possibility of self-improvement. The tragedy of the show is that Jesse lives in a world which never provides him with the support he needs to live a good life. In this video, we'll examine his life philosophy and ask the question of who is Jesse Pinkman at the end of El Camino? Who's here for self-improvement? Come on, give me a show of hands. Who among you is here hoping they can actively improve who they are? All right, see that's your first mistake. You should be here to learn self-acceptance. Jesse and Walt both start off in the drug trade with the intention of making money. But this isn't really the driving motivation for either of them. For Walt, cooking meth becomes about gaining power and building an empire, something that will demonstrate his significance and scientific genius. But for Jesse, the drug trade is the only place that allows him to cultivate his artistic ability. He was failed by the school system and rejected by his overbearing parents. We are not going to have this in our house. We need you to leave. Due to his lack of support, Jesse is forced to the fringes of society. He tells Walter that he cooks meth to make money, but it never really seems to be his priority. He doesn't know much about business and simply parrots things he's heard from Walt. He was content as a low-level dealer and didn't really know what to do with the money he earned. Jesse lives his life as a work of art. His very existence, from his clothes to his car and his alter ego, Captain Cook, it's all part of a carefully cultivated project of self-creation. He rejected his parents' life for him, represented by his preppy brother, and created a whole new image for himself. In his later work, French philosopher Michel Foucault studied how individuals resisted the normalizing power of institutions through shaping their lives creatively and choosing specific styles of existence. Through making choices about how to live a beautiful life, individuals could open new experiences and new ways of living that provided more opportunity for free expression. Jesse's life philosophy involves what we could call an aesthetics of the self. He gains pleasure and meaning through creative acts of self-invention. In the face of the hardships of life and the ultimate meaninglessness of existence, Jesse finds freedom through his creativity. For Jesse, even cooking drugs is an artistic endeavor, with chili powder as his personal signature. And let me tell you something else. This ain't chemistry, okay? This is art. Oh. Jesse begins his journey with a youthful naivety. His alter ego, Captain Cook, is based on a playful pun on a historical figure. Compare this to Walt's name, Heisenberg, which is a sinister reference to the scientist who worked on the Nazis' nuclear weapons project. His name literally means death and destruction. Jesse's wardrobe also evolves to reflect his emotional journey. He starts off wearing baggy jeans, bright colored hoodies, and beanies. His look emphasizes his alternative lifestyle and adolescence. But as he experiences more emotional turmoil with the death of his girlfriend and rehab, he starts to wear more designer tees, fitted clothing, and a cleaner aesthetic with a buzz cut and more neutral tones. At each stage, what we see on the outside reflects how Jesse feels on the inside. His artistic side is expressed through his wardrobe and style. We learn more about Jesse's thwarted ambitions for taking his art more seriously in season two, when he meets kindred spirit, Jane Margulis. Jane has been better supported than Jesse and was given more opportunity to pursue her artistic talent. Jane's dad shows an unconditional love for his daughter, despite her many failures and setbacks. Yeah, family. 
can't give up on them. Never. <laughs> what else is there? Jesse never had this support. His parents say they tried, but we see just how domineering they are and how conditional their love really is. Son, we can't stop you from ruining your life, but you will not drag us down with you. As Jesse grew up, he was never provided with an environment that nurtured his artistic abilities. Honestly, I never expected you to amount to much, but methamphetamine? But Jesse also has his own shortcomings. He's lazy and lacks the drive to keep himself on the right path. We often see him with great intentions, but then life manages to get in the way. When Jesse is encouraged, he does occasionally rise to the challenge. For example, he tells the story of his teacher, Mr. Pike from woodworking class, and how he encouraged him to create a beautiful work of art. Yeah, man, I, I can do better. In the final episode of season five during his imprisonment, we see Jesse fantasizing about creating another box. During the times of his greatest hardship, art offers an escape into a different world. For Jesse, living artistically provides a degree of freedom in a cruel and uncaring world. Self-hatred, guilt, it accomplishes nothing. It just stands in the way. Stands in the way of what? True change. Jesse's moral philosophy is rooted in his strong emotional connection with others. He instinctively feels other people's pain and is racked with guilt for what he's done. He has a natural sympathy for others, particularly children. We first see this in the episode Peekaboo from season two, in which he cares for two drug dealers' neglected child. Jesse has been lauded as the moral compass of the show, but we shouldn't mistake his suffering for morally virtuous action. Being an ethical agent is not only about determining what is right, but acting accordingly and Jesse fails throughout most of the show to seriously change his behavior. But it's hard to be too tough on Jesse because of how much he's let down by other people. Many of his problems are created by Walt's greed and ambition. Jesse often finds himself in impossible situations which results in the deaths of those he loves. But to suggest that Jesse has a Christ-like character arc is to misunderstand what he represents in the show. Jesse is no innocent. He makes his livelihood in the meth business by literally dealing death when other options are open to him. We relate to him because he represents the weakness and laziness in all of us that can overtake our best intentions. Jesse calls one of his superheroes Rewindo, who has the power of running backwards really fast when attacked, someone who's literally unable to face up to their challenges. Why do fans of the show have so much sympathy for Jesse? In part, it's because he always has the best of intentions and actually has a very positive and optimistic life philosophy. In the history of political philosophy, most thinkers possess a largely negative view of human beings. We're either damned by original sin, led by irrational desires, or driven by pride and a desire for power. Jean-Jacques Rousseau offers a much more positive outlook on humanity and champions people's capacity to improve themselves and shape their environment. Like Rousseau's philosophy, Jesse really tries to improve himself as a person and believes that he can achieve moral progress through his own actions. We can see this, for example, in his take on Georgia O'Keeffe's painting, My Last Door. And she got all obsessed with it, just had to paint it 20 times until it was perfect. Jesse says something similar about the construction of his wooden box. No matter how many times we fail, we can always try again and do better. This is also why he ultimately rejects a doctrine of self-acceptance in his therapy. He doesn't believe we should give up holding ourselves accountable. In spite of what he says to Walt at the end of season three, Jesse never truly believes that he's the bad guy. Otherwise, why would he strive so hard to do the right thing? And why would he be so torn up by the consequences of his actions? His admission simply represents the friction between his well-meaning philosophy and his all too human incapacity to live up to his own ideal. Jesse has many momentary spurs of enthusiasm for turning his life around. After his first experience with Walt, he tries to get a job in sales, but feels humiliated and immediately gives up. He also plans to fly to New Zealand with Jane and start a new life with different identities. I say we just move there, y'all. I mean, you, you can do your art, right? Like you can paint like the local castles and shit. And, uh... 
And I can be a bush pilot. Yeah, New Zealand, I can get behind that. The mere fact that his two girlfriends in the show are recovering addicts symbolises his desire to stay clean and get his life back on track. Whether he consciously knows it or not, Jesse has internalised Walt's advice that he needs to apply himself. We even find him giving the same advice to his friends when they start dealing for him. Okay, DBAA, mofos, all right? Apply yourselves. Jesse also has some great successes in the show. After failing chemistry at high school, he becomes almost as good as Walt, who is a chemistry genius. But Jesse is often held back in other areas by his inability to follow through with long-term plans and his naivety regarding others' manipulative designs. When he begins to pivot from Walt to Mike as a father figure, he's still being used as a pawn in a larger game. Jesse finds it difficult to learn from his own mistakes, because his way of dealing with guilt is to turn his suffering inwards. While it's true that Jesse suffers greatly from his own actions and those of others, he initially does little to make the situation better for those affected by his behaviour. He uses drugs to numb the feelings of guilt and gain relief from his pain. But his attempts at making things right are usually counterproductive. Rather than exiting the drug trade and finding another way to earn a living, Jesse tries to murder the two gangsters that killed Andrea's kid brother. He tries to draw a line and tells himself he's doing the right thing. But even Walter has a point here that his actions are at best misguided. Murder is not part of your 12-step program. In the previous episode, we still see Jesse dealing drugs to former users who are trying to turn their lives around. Jesse is a sympathetic yet flawed character who reminds us of the importance of always striving to do better and the dangers of how badly things can go wrong when we don't succeed. Start fresh. One could. Put things right. No. Sorry, kid. That's the one thing you can never do. At the end of season five, Jesse was left with an ambiguous open ending. While Walt received a chance to put his affairs in order, Jesse was physically liberated, but we were left with many questions of how he would come to terms with his past. El Camino, a Breaking Bad movie, provides a final resolution to Jesse's character arc, but the movie also leaves us wondering about who Jesse Pinkman has really become. He remains haunted by what's happened to him, and the whole movie is structured around constant flashbacks to the past. We see a number of theological references in the opening scenes of the movie. Just as with Jesus after he was resurrected, Jesse is not immediately recognised by his old friend. Inside his friend's house, we see Jesse deeply traumatised and shaken by his experiences. His suffering is given religious iconography with deep scars across his back and a beam of light shining down on him as he bathes in the shower. But there's a dark twist to this scene, with a loaded gun behind him pointing at the back of his head, alluding to his suffering and his crimes. The movement back and forward in time prompts us to reflect on how Jesse has changed. We're reminded of how innocent Jesse used to be, and how susceptible he was to those around him. He tries to make amends and put things right with his family. He feels like he's let them down and assures them that it's not their fault. There's also a callback to a scene where Jesse watched a beetle, which reinforces the idea of his aversion to violence. But this time, things are different. Jesse has changed from someone who couldn't even kill his own kidnapper to save himself, to an agent able to face his former tormentor. The scene at Candy Welders is a throwback to a game of fast draw in a western saloon. Jesse is there for payback. There's no reason why he needs to come here for his $1,800. He orchestrates the entire situation and willingly accepts the fight. Recognising that he can't have his redemption, Jesse chooses the next best thing, revenge. It's Jesse at his most Heisenberg. The following scene where Jesse sits in the car with the money recalls the first time Walt returns to his car in season one after his deal with Tuco. The fire and destruction of the warehouse is pictured as a metaphoric cleansing, with Jesse emerging in the next scene from a pool of water. A baptism symbolises a purification and rebirth. But into what kind of a person has Jesse been reborn? He's now the one who can pull the trigger, and has a newfound sense of boldness and agency. 
But Jesse's regeneration is bittersweet. He has to admit there's nothing that can be done for those he's killed, and the only appearance that Andrea's son Brock makes is as the recipient of a final letter from Jesse before he disappears. The journey ahead is not to the paradise he imagined living with Jane in New Zealand, but to the much bleaker and more isolated landscape of Alaska. The movie doesn't finish with him setting things right, and his character is offered little redemption for what he's done. There's no final moral of the tale, or any profound lesson that Jesse has learned from all of his suffering. But Jesse is given a new chance. He's free of drugs, and has his whole life ahead of him. After everything that's happened, all Jesse can do is pick himself up and start again. Unlike most other characters of the show, Jesse has a chance to reinvent himself. Understanding Jesse's philosophy of self-cultivation and moral perfectionism shows that Jesse's final moments are as close to a happy ending that the Breaking Bad universe will make possible. The final shot of Jesse's face as he drives away captures the pain he's endured, but it also shows the hope in the possibility of a new life. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and check out my other videos on political philosophy.